I was with a group and this young woman, she was 20 something, she had been uh, somewhat raised by her grandfather who was probably sexually abusing her from the time she was eight, five, six years. And the guy in the room was just, ah, livid. And so I'm talking with her and kind of walking through some steps of letting go of that. And he asked me the next day, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. That grandfather figure that's abusing this eight-year-old, you didn't tell me you don't judge him. I'm like, no. He's like, How? How can you not judge that? I'm like, well, because for one, I've looked at what judgment does, okay? And I see the consequences, and I'm like, that doesn't help anything, okay? Why would I put fire, or excuse me, put fuel on a fire I'd like to go out, okay? And I'm essentially talking about why I want to extinguish the suffering. So if I judge him, I'm suffering. The events happened, it's history, I don't know these people. But now I'm suffering with my judgment of this other person. How does that get anybody out of suffering if I had to? Okay, so first of all, why would I? Oh, we could call justice and morality. Is justice and morality healing the suffering? No, it's just ammunition to judge it more. Okay. So when, when people start showing me the benefit of judging someone or criticizing someone, I'll consider it. All right. But now, let's say you've already fallen into that pit and now you're judgmental. How do you get out? Because you believe all the justifications, you believe all the morality. Right? You have all the justification. Yeah, they were really wrong. They really wronged you. Who's suffering? Me. <laughs> You're the one suffering. Do you want to continue suffering? No. Okay. Then, first of all, you don't want to suffer anymore. And oh, by the way, they're probably not even in the room or, you know, in the neighborhood. So this person you're really angry at or judgmental of, they're not really receiving all your venom. You're sending it, you're receiving it. So, you're punishing yourself with the anger you have with your story about them. Okay. So it's like you're pound, you're beating yourself up and saying, "I'm really getting you. You're really getting it. I hate, can't stand what you did." Like who's bruised? Who's bruised? Who's emotionally worn out and bruised? Yeah. How smart is this? Okay. Now our mind says, oh yeah, it comes up with all the really intelligent reasons why you're justified being angry. But in honesty, the end result is you're doing this. It's not very bright. We think we're really smart, but it's not very bright. Okay. So, so what's the smarter thing to do? Well, stop doing this. You're not saying... Hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. So, now, to forgive them, right? What is that? We're judging what they're doing, which means we are ho holding some expectation. They should have done this instead. In the case of the grandfather, well, they shouldn't have molested the granddaughter. They are... Okay, that's reasonable. If we assume that he was mentally stable, emotionally stable. That he had control of his faculties and emotions and behaviors. But did he? I'd say probably obviously not. You could say he had a mental or emotional illness that resulted in his behavior. Huh? Then expecting him, oh, he should have been healthy when he was had a mental emotional sickness. 
I'm like, okay, no. In reality, he had a mental, emotional signal. So I bring that morality expectation to here. This is a problem. And this is the way it manifests, the way he treated someone. Okay. And you know, you could say also that your judgment of someone, your anger towards them, your belief that they should have been there, is your emotional illness. And with that illness, you suffer. Okay? And your hope is that they, if they change, you stop suffering. But it didn't change your illness. The only way you heal your illness is to let go your stories, your false expectations, and look at, hey, it was what it was. That grandfather is really this person. And I'm going to drop this image of perfection of how they should have been. Now you're healed. That's how you cure your own emotional suffering, mental illness. It's not about them. Exactly. It's not about them. I'm making it much more complicated. I could just could have said it's not about them, but I'm showing the pieces and parts. You're not saying that you have to be okay with it. Forgiving someone doesn't mean you're okay with what happened. Forgiving someone doesn't mean you agree and say, yeah, I condone what they did. Okay. It's like, no, it's not okay, but I understand they couldn't help themselves. That's, that's the sticking point. Um, I want to be able to say, I mean, I don't want to, but there's that part that says if I forgive somebody, then everything's okay. Um, as far as them and me and all. Okay, so your question is, if I forgive someone, it means that, oh, it was okay, what or, they did. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Well, that's a kind of, what do they call it? Uh, contract, the rider they put in the contract, you know, that's kind of a, an extra line item in the contract that you're making up. Condition. That what is making up? You're making up. Saying you forgive someone has, and saying it was okay what they did is two completely separate things. But our mind links them up like this and say, oh, I can't forgive. I have to continue to suffer because it means, right? right? It doesn't mean that. Well, it sure seems that way. No, it seems that way because you believe it that way. But if you don't, but if you unlink the two, you say, you know what, it wasn't okay, and you know what, I don't want to suffer, so I'm going to let this go. It was what it was. Am am I thrilled that it happened? No. Happy that it happened? No. Would I want it to happen to me or anybody else? No. I don't agree with it and think it was okay. But I'm not going to judge and blame anymore. That's, these are two completely separate things. But they were tied up in my mind. They're tied up in a lot of people's minds. Okay? So you have to unlink those. You have to unlink those. It's not saying at all. It has nothing to do with saying it's okay. What do you think I'm saying it's okay that, that this man sexually abused his granddaughter? Okay? That's, is, do you think I'm saying that? No. No. Okay. So... They're not the same. <laughs> it's clear they're not the same. All right? But I'm not going to hate and judge the man. Why? Purely selfish reasons. I don't want to suffer. And oh, by the way, when someone doesn't act like that, yeah, there's consequences. There's consequences. Okay? Someone harms another person. Someone steals another person. There's a system in the world call it justice systems, there's, at a minimum, there's consequences. Okay? But I'm talking about the emotional consequences we go through where we can be in resentment and anger and judgmental attitudes towards someone for decades. Okay? Even after they're no longer alive or we don't see them anymore. Like, that, to me, is injustice, emotional injustice. Okay? I'm not here to talk about a criminal system and a justice system, but what goes on in your mind? And what can you change? And you can certainly unlink this idea that forgiveness means you condone it and would like it to happen again. No. No, it doesn't say, oh, I'm cool with that, that was good. No. These are not the same. But yeah, it's often a sticky point. So, if you recognize that the person who's, shall we say, behaving badly in an irrational, emotional way, 
they have a belief system illness, emotion, driving and emotional behavior. And they can't help themselves. Now what we've done by that is we take away this image of perfection that they should have been normal, healthy, and we say, you know what? I'm not even healthy. I got a judgmental story. That's unhealthy. So I can understand how those things get sticky and hard to get rid of. Okay? Uh, no, it's not the same dynamic, but you see that they're both sticky. And the bigger ones, the one the child abuser has, is probably a lot bigger in yours and a lot more difficult to get rid of. So if you think, why don't they just drop it? Like, your story is easy to drop. It's just a judgmental story. How long have you had it? Okay? So I put this there so you have some measurement of this is not necessarily an easy thing to change. It can be changed. But judgment doesn't make it change. Okay? So, the deal is, you, by understanding that that person is who they are and the way they are, and it's not what we'd hope them to be, you drop that ideal image and you end up with, you know what, it was what it was. And they are the way they are. They do accepting, what they do. Accepting the way they are. And that is acceptance. Acceptance happens when you let go of the idealized image. You, all you're left with... Of what they're supposed to be. Yeah, you're only left with acceptance. And what are you accepting? What it is. You've come to acceptance. And oh, by the way, you've basically gotten to forgiveness also. You've accomplished the same thing. Acceptance for it is what it is, is the same state of mind and, and peace with things that you have when you, give, when you do forgiveness. Okay.